Welcome everybody to Feng Shui Mastery by Kathy Hargren, that's me the host, and I'm delighted to actually invite a guest speaker this evening to talk to us about Taoism. And for people who've never seen that word before, this is how it looks. It's actually pronounced, it looks like Tao, but it's pronounced Tao. And it's a fascinating subject and it is all about, it's not a religion, it's it's a, more of a philosophy of being. And often you'll find this symbol actually represents all the ideas in Taoism. And it's very much related to feng shui because it, it is the source from which all knowledge has sprung in relation to feng shui. So, without further ado, let, let me introduce you to Michael, because he's been studying the Tao now for 30, 40 years, and has actually practiced some of the philosophies um, that he's going to talk about this evening. So, Michael, are you there? I am here, Cathy, yes. Great. Thanks yes. very much for coming along tonight, and it's a, it's a great, um, it's, it's a great delight to actually have this discussion about this particular philosophy because we don't really hear too much about it and to actually get an opportunity to have this discussion is really quite um quite an opportunity because we don't really hear about philosophies and how it actually relates to our lives on a day-to-day basis so can you just introduce the subject and tell us a little bit more about how it got started and where it came from well I suppose it's originally founded by Lao Tzu, although to say it was founded by him is a bit of a misnomer. The legend goes that um, he was a spiritual master and uh, he got on a donkey to leave town as it were. And uh, when he was leaving China, um, one of the um, guards at the uh, on a sentry post, asked him before he left, could he write down his wisdom? And apparently he went off on his own and wrote the Tao Te Ching and came back and said, there you are, <laughs> in contemporary language. But essentially, um, it's, it's hidden in history. It's so old now, but essentially, it, it's, uh, the Tao Te Ching is the, is the best expression of the philosophy of Taoism. Okay, and what are the basic tenets in the, in that particular system? The, the tenets are essentially that there is something which is unknowable, which in the West would be called God. And this unknowable Tao supports everything, supports the universe, creation, everything. And yet itself is never expressed except through the universe through creation through your through our lives through our everyday lives yeah. going to the laundry yeah going shopping okay so basically what you're saying is that there is an invisibility about a power or a force but eventually it becomes manifested in everyday things in our lives and um this philosophy is represented by this symbol that we're looking at now um do you want to say a little bit more about what that represents? Yes, but can I just comment on your comment first? Um, because it sounded very interesting. Because when you think about it, what do we do? We have a thought and then it manifests. We think about going to the cinema and then we go to the cinema. We think about cooking a meal and then we cook the meal. And yet no one's ever seen any thoughts except their own. Mm. So in a sense, they're unmanifest. And they mm. give rise to a manifestation. So what so you're sense, saying is there's, yeah. there's a very good analogy there. <laughs> yeah. So what you're saying is that the, that really everything is invisible, and until we put something into action, then that becomes manifest. So it relates back to feng shui because one of the things that I've, I've said in the in the lessons I've been teaching is, you know how to command your own space within your own home by realizing that there are there is an invisible feeling in that room 
And how do you clear it so that you can make it feel better or you just clear it because it makes it, it, it does literally clear the air. So, you, you know, it does, it certainly does relate to some of the concepts that I've been teaching about, about feng shui, about the invisibility, which, which I think really relates to a lot of people because they realize that not everything that is powerful can be seen. Mm, exactly, exactly. And the thing with Taoism is that it's not so much about thinking as about paying attention and being aware. And then the example that I often use is if you take a stone and you throw it into a lake on a stormy day, it just disappears because you cannot see where it's gone because there's so many waves caused by the wind. But if you drop the same stone into a still pond, you just see the, the circles, the ripples, for maybe a couple of minutes afterwards, so you know exactly where it is. So in the same way, it's like the more we pay attention, the more still we are, the more empty we are, the more aware we become. So somebody can walk into a room and feel it doesn't quite feel right, and someone else can walk into the room and notice nothing, mm. absolutely nothing. So what's that and related it's down to? to that person's well, it's a bit, that's to do with your own sensitivity. And mm. some people just are more sensitive than others. But it doesn't mean to say that those who are not sensitive don't get affected. Okay. Uh, I, I believe one of your speakers later on will, will be talking about things like energy fields. And we know from science that living near, say, electrical pylons can affect people's health. But they're not aware yeah. Of being affected by that. Yeah. So ultimately, then, the Tao is talking about the invisible and how it manifests into, I understand, a world known in, in, in the forms of yin and yang, or shall we say, duality. So, is it, am I right in thinking that Taoism is the one that incorporates everything in creation and can't be divided? And then it actually expressed in our world into duality. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. I mean, it's Lao Tzu says, uh, darkness within darkness, meaning that the Tao itself is unknowable. Then it will manifest as yin and yang, the polar opposites, you know, like, uh, I don't know, energy and matter or space and matter in, in the way mm. that science uses it. Men yeah. and women. Men and women give rise to babies. Mm. <laughs> Even mm. they, it, yeah, it's a yin and yang principle being acted out. The interplay between these two energies, the yin and the yang, in Taoism it gives rise to the ten thousand things. The ten thousand things is just a poetic expression. It just means everything. So this interplay between these two forces give rise to everything else. And if you look at the symbol. It's rotating because it's dynamic, it's ever moving, and there's a dot of the opposite in each, implying that when it comes to a certain point, it switches into its opposite. So what that suggests and a then, good example is if, sorry, what what that suggests then, just break, just tying it all together, is that that mm. in creation there is always there's always a movement and there's extremes this yin yang symbol basically is the extremes of one against the other but in between those extremes which is where i think a lot a lot of people lie and live in their lives are the 10,000 different ways of living that are actually not in the extreme so that most people are living in 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 the middle somewhere and don't live such extreme lifestyles. So, for example, if we're talking about lifestyles. But can you say a little bit more about the space? Because that's relevant in feng shui. Well, the, the space, um, there's, uh, there's two forms of space, as it were. There's a, shall we say, a metaphysical transcendental, transcend, transcendental space. And that's like the Tao itself. And then there's a space that we normally think of when we normally talk when we normally talk about space, we mean the space in the room, the space in the concert hall, we can say it's got good acoustics. 
we say we like to go out in the countryside because there's wide open spaces. But that, in essence, is not what is being spoken about in Taoism. The space that they're talking about is, and I'll use an, in, an Indian phrase, which I think is, is really beautiful and conveys it wonderfully. It talks about the space within the space within the heart. And the reason it's in the heart is because the heart accepts everything unconditionally. The heart is a symbol of love. And the space is inside the heart. But inside the space is a space. And what it means is the space that's being referred to has no edges. In other words, it's absolute. It's really just another way of talking about the Tao. Like Lao Tzu says, darkness within darkness. And the Indians say the space within the space within the heart. It's the same thing. It's this space. And as an analogy, in say Feng Shui or any other thing, we can walk into a room and we can change that space. So it's much more accepting. It's much more comforting. It's much more invigorating. Mm, yeah. And you can walk into a house and you can feel that. Yeah. Yeah. What's so about, there's what's... this. There's this sort of abs. Go on. What's about the Sorry relationship? <laughs> what about the relationship with Taoism and nature? Well, Taoism and nature. Um, if you look at a lot of the Taoist literature, it talks in terms of, of nature. Like they don't talk about oh morality in terms of good and right. They talk about morality in terms of being like water. Water flows everywhere. It doesn't. It doesn't contend, and yet it's the strongest thing going. I mean, water will wear away a rock, but actually it's not using its own force. All it's doing is allowing gravity to pull it towards the lowest point. So it's also demonstrating humility as well as strength, which are often tied together in Taoism. And it's seeking its own home. It's all going back to the ocean. So it's it's a very good analogy, and that's seen all throughout nature, the way that it rains, it goes back to the oceans, it's picked up by the you know the winds, goes up in the sky, falls again as rain. It's this constant cycle, but it's a very good analogy for how to live. Yeah, so basically the, the Taoism is actually integrally linked to the cycles of nature and the concepts of nature. Is that right? That's right. And, and essentially, if you use that as a model, you know, the, the, the way water behaves, it nourishes everything, it supports everything, and yet it dissolves everything. As an analogy, and you, you mentioned space, Kathy, well, you know, how would we use this in our own lives? Well, if you think of what is, what is it about us, what's, what's different about us? It's the fact that we're aware. A stone isn't aware. A tree may be aware, but not to the same degree as a human being. So what marks us as quite different is the fact that we're aware. So in the same way that water follows its own nature, the question that we can ask ourselves is, what is this awareness yeah. that we call ourselves? Right. Yeah? So would that lead on to the whole idea of being more and more aware within yourself, like, for example, meditating, you would actually be more aware of the kind of space that you are sitting in, whether it be your home, your work office. Exactly, yeah. I mean, the way your your external environment will reflect how you are on the inside, you know, in your in your own being, as it were. And the process of meditation is simply allowing what you don't need in that moment just to let it go for that moment and then when you finish meditating you pick it up again and the analogy that i use is if you've you know done a lot of shopping and you get in and you've got all this shopping you put it down and you go ah oh, you just let go of it so in the same way when a person meditates the idea is to let go of everything it, to become more and more empty back to the space which we mentioned earlier and then when they go back out into the world, they're refreshed. 
Yeah. And, so and it's almost like recharging common language. Yeah, it's almost like recharging yourself. Then really, it's like re right, like plugging yourself into maybe an electric or or a, a, a spiritual grid, which it recharges you. But keeping this in mind with the feng shui, how would you actually implement this philosophy in your life, and especially in relation to the concepts of one's environment and how that affects you? Um, I think the first thing is 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 um, Lao Tzu says the world is sacred. You cannot improve it, and he doesn't mean by that is that you can't go out and buy yourself a new you know a new outfit. He doesn't mean it. He doesn't mean perfection in that way. The way he means perfection is that when you are right in yourself, then the world gets better on the outside, and it's a two-way process. You can you can. You can meditate, but if you don't change your environment, if you don't change your life, no, nothing's nothing's changed. That's quite hand, interesting for the feng shui you, people because this is exactly what I'm saying about you know what's on the walls, what are the colours that are surrounding you, how much clutter do you have, how close are you to you know things like pylons and lots of electric electronic equipment in the bedroom. Um, look around you which flowers are dying or plants have been dying for many many months and you've just not attended to them and all this is about the space on the outside but it actually makes more of a bigger statement of of us all of what's going on on the inside that's right and the fact is that the more empty you are on the inside the more you will notice the things on the outside or at least that's that yeah. should we say that is a theory but it's the fact is that you can you can teach people as you are teaching them the principles of feng shui but they can bring to that their own sensitivity yeah or they can just follow it like a set of rigid rules oh you do this you do that yeah and yet really what you're saying is these are the principles these are not uh, these are not cast in stone mm. every situation is unique every person is unique that's right. And That's right, Michael. I'm glad that you brought that up because um, time and time again, you know, I get people come into feng shui and they're seeking out the big list of rules of do's and don'ts. And the way I look at it is that because everyone's an individual, a unique individual, then what they need from their own environment is going to be unique to them. But if they can understand the principles of Taoism, principles that lie behind feng shui, like yin, yang, space five elements the I Ching, which is about change and we can go on to that now about change if they can understand those principles then they can start to change their environment according to what it is that they want to attract into their own personal life as opposed to you know abiding by a set of rules and regulations which it just shows shows you how eager people are to to abide by rules without actually thinking for themselves, well, actually, what would I want to be looking at around me? For example, if there was no TV in their home, what did they? What is it they would like to be looking at? Because these, the artwork, the colours, the shapes, the smells, the sounds, they're all affecting people all the time. So just finally, I just want to bring it to a close. To, but um, one, one, one of the most... Um, important principles of feng shui and you see this in not so much the spatial concept of feng shui but the timing the timing aspect about being in the right place at the right time and what feng shui does take into consideration that nothing stands still as we can see in the yin yang symbol here you know that we rarely ever see perfection in the way this idealistic way it's always constantly changing um, can you say a little bit about the book of, of changes and, and the idea of change? Uh, I can try. Um, the, I, the I Ching, again, is, is very much influenced by Taoism. And the I Ching is simply, you've got yin and yang, which are two lines. One's broken, one's open. So the open one is the acceptance, that's the yin principle, and the closed one is the yang principle. Uh, these two come together. And they create the 10,000 things. But the first thing they have to create is something. And something has a beginning, it has a middle, 
and it has an end. So immediately you have three three lines, and that's the trigram. Hmm. But then you have the inner and the outer. So you have six lines altogether. Three denote the inner, three denote the outer. Can I just and interject each of those lines... there? Can, can I just interject there? Because mm -hmm. because what people can't actually sure. see what see what you're actually pointing out. So I would just like to to kind of bring it to their imaginations that what it is really the book of changes is it's a code. It's it looks like a code. It's like a binary system. And um without actually demonstrating that principle, it's a code and I understand, am I right in saying this, that there are sixty four different um codes in that book and they all basically demonstrate sixty four different situations that one could ever live in one's life. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, yeah, that's a uh, good way of putting it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So basically, yeah. I mean, it, 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 there's a whole philosophy to, to and uh, you know, there's a hell of a lot of philosophy to the I, uh, to the I Ching. Yes. Yeah. You could do a whole, you could do a whole interview on that on its own. Yeah. Well, we will be doing that later on in the series, but for now, um, what I what I just wanted to kind of get across was the whole concept that nothing stays static. Um, have you got any comment on that, about the, more about the flow and the philosophy of the I Ching? Um, well, the, the I Ching, again, it points out that, you know, nothing, nothing is ever static, nothing is stable. It comes back to the, uh, the symbol of the yin and the yang. There's nothing in creation that ever stands still. Everything is moving. Even in the Western Bible, it says, be still and know that I am God, implying that, you know, that this divinity, this whatever you wish to call it, is found in stillness, not in movement. In the Tao Te Ching, it says the sage lets go of that and holds on to this. I mean, that is always over there. This is always here. So he's implying that it's closer to you. It's a, it's it's very interesting because it's everything points back to back to you as an individual. Everything points back to you as an individual. And the Taoist says, follow your own nature. And in order to follow your own nature, you have to discover what your nature is intrinsically before it got laid over by society, by belief systems, education. You know, become yeah. like a little child. Yeah, you know, that makes sense. That you know, people basically get lost in the maze of life and lose what their true nature is by the time they've been, you know, attacked by all the stereotypes and the different things that actually appear to give people what's called an identity. But I think the whole thing about feng shui and the I Ching and the Taoism sounds to me like it's all about a journey of self-discovery and I've always um, loved feng shui, mainly because I start with the outside so people can see what's out there. And all roads lead back to oneself. And I think on that note, I think that would be a good um, beat, so to say, <laughs> to end on. Have you got anything else to add to that, Michael? No, I'd just like to say thank you for the opportunity to talk a little bit about Taoism and thank you to your listeners. Yes, thank you very much. It's fascinating and I'm, sh I'm sure we could, we could spend hours and hours talking about that and the I Ching. But for now, um, and for the people listening, um, you can find more and more about this subject um, and there will be interviews later on in the series. We're going to be looking at the... I Ching, we're going to be looking at Rumi and the divinity of Feng Shui. So it's not just about, oh, where do I place the, the, the lucky tortoise? Because Feng Shui, it's doing it a disservice if that's all the level you're at. We're, we're coming from a far um, wider, um, intelligent and practical um, place in which to discuss this on the Feng Shui mastery show with me your host Kathy Hargaden so I hope you've enjoyed the discussion and any questions you've got my uh, my email address come back to me on www. 
fengshuimastery.net or on my email wealthyspaces at gmail.com. Welcome any conversation or discussion about our conversation tonight on the DAO. And with that, I'll say good night to everybody. Bye for now. Bye, Michael. Thank you. Bye.